While preparing an installation for a mobile radio, GMRS, CB radio, even ham radio, well, there could be some unique challenges and I faced a few unique challenges. I want to show you my Ford Bronco installation for my ham radio today on Ham Radio Dude. This should give you some ideas on what could be done better, what you might implement within your install, and well, just a good time here installing radios, am I right? So as soon as the sun comes up, Actually, I bet I can pull this in here. So hold on just a second. Oh, and thanks for watching. I hope you're well. My original plan was to put the radio in the back of the vehicle and the antenna in the back of the vehicle. But the problem that I had with that was very simple. I couldn't find a mount that would mount to the back of the vehicle that I liked. But I did eventually come up with a solution. So let me turn around this vehicle and I'll show you. My unique challenge on this install was the fact that this is a soft top. And the reason that is such a unique challenge isn't the antenna as you might think, but when the summertime comes, I wanna be able to drive around with the soft top off and not have to worry about the radio getting stolen if I go into a grocery store, if I go into a building for a while. Here we are under the hood. Now there's a couple of things that I wanna point out. I'm not a professional, I never claimed to be, and I don't wanna to claim to be, to be honest but I do want to show you my install and some of the things that I think could be improved on so that when you're doing your install, you can kind of improve on them yourselves or at least get some ideas. And so here was the first thing that happened. I ended up taking 12 gauge wire. I used PowerWorks wire because, well, BN Tech Go makes a silicone 12 gauge wire and it was just, uh, it, it wasn't as rigid, it wasn't as stiff. So I went with the PowerWorks 12 gauge wire on both the negative and the positive. And I ran it through this tubing here that I got at Home Depot. And the reason this was nice now is I was able to take these zip ties that you might see here in the corners. And I was able to zip tie the tubing with the wires inside on certain spots along the way to keep everything looking neat. But more importantly, to kind of make sure that this tubing or the wires doesn't hit anything too hot or doesn't short anything out, God forbid. And so I think that this tubing is a wonderful idea. But I did go from the battery, the negative, well, the positive and the negative. One of the things that I want to do different in the future, and I think it's very important, is you should have a fuse as close to the battery as possible. <laughs> and uh, I think the reason for that is, is if anything shorts out, then, you know, you short out here instead of all the way down this wire inside the vehicle. So you're basically protecting anything negative from happening if a short does occur. Uh, except to this point right here. So in the future, I will go ahead and I will short out or rather fuse out the battery wires right at the battery. It's pretty well known that 12 gauge wire will allow for a maximum draw of 20 amps. Basically you can put 20 amps through or of load through this uh, wire before it starts to get hot, potentially melt or potentially start a fire or do some damage. One of the things I want to point out though, is I'll be using the Yaesu FTEM 400. It's a maximum output power of 50 Watts, a two meter, 70 centimeter radio. And that probably on receive won't be an issue, maybe a half of an amp to an amp of current. But when we start to talk about transmitting, that's how much current we're going to draw where there's going to be a concern. So I did some research and my research conducted has been essentially over, well, however old the radio is, I've been using it in other vehicles and I haven't had an issue. <laughs> if I was just to leave you with that though, that would be kind of poor uh, practice. So what the concept is, is you find out how much amperage the radio will draw at its maximum power with everything enabled. And with the Yaesu FTM 400, the user manual states 20 amps, although I've seen slightly less. I don't consider 12 gauge wire being a problem in this case. But from the 12 gauge wire, I went ahead and I went through the firewall here. There's a little plug and all I had to do was drill a little bit of a hole for the plug to put the two wires through. And also over here, right where the tubing ends and it just has wires that go into the passenger compartment, I have another zip tie, but this zip tie goes to where my antenna goes. So here I have RG58A and hold on, I'll show you where I ended up installing my Larson 2 meter 70 centimeter half wave antenna right here. And I have not had any negative interaction with the vehicle. I think it's far enough apart being somewhere around a foot, maybe a little bit longer. 
So the center loaded antenna that we were talking about here from Larson has been a great antenna for me and it's an NMO mount, which means, yeah, I had to get an NMO connector and then I could easily take this off if I ever need to. I did find and observe that it fits into my garage just barely. Sometimes it might hit this little top piece of the garage, but it's okay. Uh, and as far as mounting the NMO, I ended up going with RG58A. It's a Midland coaxial cable. Sorry, RG58U. It's a Midland coaxial cable and a Midland NMO. And I went into this mount that I found online, which was about 38 bucks. And you could also install uh, a spotlight right here. I would assume that the spotlight would negatively interact with the antenna itself, but you might be wondering how I went into plastic and how am I still able to communicate out and not lose my signal? Well, the thing about this is it is a center loaded uh, antenna, so it's uh, half a wave and it doesn't require a ground plane. And now you know. Um, the coaxial cable fit really nice in between this gap that you see here between the hood and this plastic compartment. Just take a time to admire that beautiful sunrise with the light ring right here. I'm trying to get some really good light for you and hopefully this will work. What I ended up doing is I took those wires that we were talking about earlier that were in the front hood area coming from the battery as well as the antenna that's right there. And they're under this dash here. This whole column removes. This is where the fuse panel is. And what I did is I have them grouped together, zip tied, and then I have them zip tied on one of the support rails for this dash area. And then what happens is it goes to the radio, which is under the steering column. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, you're going to lose your ability to steer. It's dangerous, and it's, it's actually not. It's mounted under here. I know it's hard to see. I'll try to get some photos later. But basically, I can still access the FTM400 uh, base unit, if you will. The microphone comes out right here, and I could still access the SD card if I need to program the radio for new frequencies. Much better than programming it manually. All right, wait, hold on. We need to talk real quick. This is a very critical safety warning, and sometimes our experiences are the best way for others to learn. So I want to share with you a story and kind of wrap it into what I am doing here. Uh, in 2009, in Kandahar, Afghanistan, the enemy forces loved to play this little game where they would load up their trucks, like their cement trucks, their big rigs, and they would load it up with explosives, cement, concrete, nails, rocks, anything that created a projectile. And the purpose of that was when something would explode, those projectiles would go everywhere and harm us, harm people. We don't want that, do we? It's horrible then, it would be horrible now. And why do I tell you all this? Well, if you like that idea of projectiles, maybe you do what I did and you do it blindly. But if you have this thought or this consideration in your mind that uh, maybe I want to be as safe as possible so at the end of the day I can walk through the doors with my knees, maybe you do the research to make sure that you're installing this radio in a spot that's not obstructing an airbag because airbags are so powerful that it may just rip that radio straight out and create shrapnel, big objects of metal coming straight at your knees. So as cool as it is to crawl the malls for moms with our radios, we need to make sure that our safety is in mind so at the end of the day we go home in one piece with all of our limbs. And I just wanted to point that out because that is critical. Do your diligence. Now if you look up the 2021 Ford Bronco, you might see that there are knee airbags for the Ford Bronco Sport Outer Banks. But the Ford Bronco Sport is nothing like the other model Broncos of that year. We see that the end, or excuse me, the microphone comes out right here. And right now, the way I have it is it's magnetic. I don't like this solution and I will fix it in the future. But basically, it then allows me to have my microphone right here, grab it if I need to, put it back if I need to. Since we're hooked directly to the battery, what we could do is we could just turn the radio on right now and we could turn the radio off. So it's really nice not to have to have the vehicle on in order to utilize the radio. And the way I've done everything, I've experienced zero electrical interference this way. One thing you might notice right here is this, this little wire, and this is ugly. I do not like this at all. In fact, I'm gonna fix this here in just a moment, like right now. Actually, the wire is supposed to be tucked right here. And I think it just came out, which I don't like. What I'm gonna have to do is re-remove this whole bottom column right here in order to get in there and tuck this kind of properly if you will but the reason i really like this unit right here as you can see 
I also have this magnetically done and I could easily remove this if I'm going somewhere. It's kind of hard with one hand. Now I have the head unit and it doesn't look as conspicuous, especially, especially when I put the microphone under here where the, the base unit is as well. Now you really can't tell that there was anything really there of value. So it kind of gives a little bit more reassurance to having a radio in the vehicle. And this has performed very well. You know, I appreciate this setup. I could still access all these columns pretty well. Let me get that back on in a second. I could still access all these columns very well. Uh, if I don't like this in the future, it'll probably help me be able to see what my temperature is set to because I kind of do lose that ability. But uh, everything else has been very well. I don't really lose any of the screen time. I haven't had a problem with it yet, at least. And uh, I could appreciate it if I'm sitting in the passenger seat as too. So sometimes maybe I'm in the passenger seat and I want to do radio and sometimes I'm in the driver's seat. I think that this is a really slick setup for what it is. It was very simple for me to do. It sure does beat going in the back and I'll show you what I was going to do. My original plan was to take this off. And the first problem is, is unfortunately I'm unable to lift very heavy amounts of weight. Uh, and because of that, getting this tire off may be difficult to mount on some kind of bar that comes here. They do make a NMO mount that comes off the backside, comes off of this right here for a Jeep. And it actually fits on here very well as long as you have a one inch spacer. But by the time you get a one inch spacer, which is, you know, 70, 80 bucks or something along those lines, you get the tire off, it becomes kind of cumbersome. It would have worked very well with the soft top anyway. And in fact, it may have worked a little bit better because then you necessarily wouldn't have any metal right here. Whereas in the front, as you saw, I had that angled metal for the windshield. And then what I was gonna do is I was gonna sneak it in somewhere over here. And I was going to rip this off and I was gonna put the radio inside of there. Uh, there's a 12 volt line here. So I would have been able to basically splice the wire, but then I would have to do these really long runs for the head unit and the microphone unit, as well as an external speaker all the way to the front. And I just didn't find that worth it when it was so easy to go up in the front of the vehicle. Whew. Well, the sun's finally coming up, which means I got to get going here in just a second. But I wanted to thank you for watching and just point out a few more things that I could think of. My standing wave ratio on both two meters and 70 centimeters was 1.3 to one or less where I wanted it to be. So I was completely content with that, even using the RG58U cable. It's a short run, so it should be fine as far as DB loss goes. How did I connect my wires to the battery terminal? Well, initially I used some very cheap ring adapters. Initially I used some very cheap ring adapters and they'll work, but I wanna get these waterproof ones kind of installed. They have heat shrink on them and they just seem to be a better quality. So I'll probably put these on a little bit later today. From these ring connectors, I went into the wire and uh, power pole connectors once we hit inside of the firewall area or inside the passenger compartment. And the really nice thing about that is from the power poles, I connect in a inline fuse and then I could do power poles on the other side to the radio itself. So basically I'm using power poles on most every end of my install. And that seems to work very well. Again, when I do fuse the front battery area here, I'm gonna put power poles on it. Here's an afterthought for you, GPS, APRS. It works great where this is located. I have no problem acquiring satellites, nor do I have any issue with beaconing my location. One thing I will caution you about though, is if I leave the radio on while it's parked in the garage, it's so close to the garage door uh, receiver that it will open the garage door. And uh, I've confirmed that multiple times. How does this sound though? I'm driving down the road at 50 miles an hour. Am I capable of actually being able to hear what is being said on the radio? Well, I'd say yes, but you could be the judge. My youngest daughter works fat, so if she gets a ride from her. Uh, let's see. Yo, know, interesting thing. They found out that down the street from where my car, my daughter's car got vandalized. How much time did it take me to install this? Well, <laughs> Uh, I think we have to take into consideration the amount of time I sat there wondering where I was going to put everything. So my total time involved and invested in this with trips to the store to get the right connectors and everything was probably, probably four hours, 
it was a good time. It was a good four hours of time. Now it's going to be perfect for, like I said, mall crawling. You know, we're driving around the mall with the top down and we're on our radio and stuff like that. But then we need to pull in so we can go cruise the mall for who goes to the mall anymore. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it would be nice to be able to take that radio out. With that, thanks for watching the channel. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Please be respectful. <laughs> we would all benefit from a more respectful world. Uh, take care. Have a great day.